Take one. Good day, folks. I'm Mick from Iron Fem. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Good day, folks. Welcome to another moment with Mick. I am he, Mick. Uh, for today's video, I'm answering a viewer's question, a very interesting question, I thought. So uh, we're taking the time to make a little movie about it. The viewer asks, what do you think of the new Ineos Grenadier and would you buy slash drive one? Very interesting question and it really got me uh, thinking a bit more than usual. So those of you that don't know, the Ineos Grenadier is a new vehicle company. Ineos is a, a petrochemical company owned by one Sir Jim Ratcliffe, um, one time richest man in England. And uh, he loved the Land Rover Defender and he wanted to make a newer, better version of the Land Rover Defender, especially since the Land Rover themselves have discontinued the old Defender. And as I'm sure you're aware, they have now launched a new Defender, which is totally different to the old Defender. Uh, doesn't really apply to the old Defender uh, fan base. It's really a uh, more rugged version of a Range Rover as such. So it's not a solid front and rear axle, old school four wheel drive. It's a thoroughly modern vehicle, a totally different vehicle. And it's kind of left a gap for an old school four wheel drive. And uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe has thought it a good idea to design a vehicle that looks very much like the old Defender, but thoroughly modern and to all intents and purposes, a lot more reliable and up to date than what the old Land Rover Defender was. So the new Ineos Grenadier differs uh, significantly under the skin from the old Defender. One of the most telling differences with the Ineos Grenadier is the fact that it is powered by BMW motors, a diesel engine and a petrol engine, those are your options. They're both three litre, both straight six, both turbocharged. The only option for the gearbox is an eight-speed ZF gearbox. Now, BMW engines are very good. ZF gearboxes are very good, and they'll certainly be better and more reliable than the engines and gearbox combinations in the previous Defender. The vehicle features front and rear solid axles, coil sprung all around, very similar to the old Defender. Now, bear in mind that the Defender is based on a vehicle that was designed in the late 40s, and while a lot of things had changed, essentially it's the same design and concept as that original vehicle. So the Grenadier sticks very closely to that tried and tested winning off-road formula. Front and rear solid axles, coil springs all around, front, center and rear diff lock. From what I've been able to gather from the press releases on this vehicle, it'll also feature a lot of electronic trickery, which will further enable its off-road prowess. I think the Grenadier is a fantastic idea. I always loved the Defender, however, they were never very reliable vehicles and I never cherished actually owning one. So to answer the question that was posed, would I drive one? Absolutely, I look forward to driving one and certainly forward to taking it off-road. Would I however own one? Well, I don't think so and I'll tell you why. If you're overlanding far away from civilization and something goes wrong, it's going to be an expensive and arduous exercise to get help and get the vehicle sorted. So folks, for me, the lack of a DLIN support network is a bit of a deal breaker. This vehicle makes you want to take it and go over landing, but I would be very reluctant to take it anywhere far away from civilization. Fantastic vehicle though, great idea, love it. Folks, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when we post more of these videos. As always, stay safe, take care, see you next time.